I don't know why it came into my mind, but I... Um, obviously, when I was a little boy, I used to be able to remember the steps for dancing. And there was a, a sort of garden party or something, and I remember a great green meadow, and I was there dancing. Well, I, I never was very elegant in my movements, but I think I just remembered what to do. Synthetic memory is the reconstruction of a personal story, of a memory, into an image or a video using generative AI. And this project works in the intersection between arts, technology and community, uh, with the aim to help people uh, dignify and recover parts of the past that have been lost. You're sort of going into detail that I haven't thought about for decades. I can't recapture the image, I'm sorry. Let me just think about it for a little while. Sure. It's gone. We are somehow entangled with our memories. And when we start to lose grasp of these memories, we start to lose a bit of ourselves. There is a small part of ourselves that is lost. A synthetic memory always starts as a conversation. It can start uh, asking questions such as, what is your earliest memory? Or what was your favorite hobby? Do you have a memory of when you went skiing? Yes, I have, but I've sort of lost most of it. I remember beginning very badly, and I, I didn't have any lessons, and I used to lean back. And from there, you start to jump through the conversation until you find a moment, a story something that can be illustrated through an image. And that moment, the prompter starts to prompt it, it starts to create a definition, a description of the image. Later on, you show the image to the interviewee, and then there is like this memory exposition. What about this one? It needs to be out of focus. <laughs> yeah. That's meant to be me, is it? I don't want to help it. And today, in the workshop with Eduard, it was really interesting to explore how someone that is going through this journey um, through dementia could clearly say, no, that was not exactly how I remember it. There were moments that she, he could actually click with something, and then he will say, hmm, but I, ha I was wearing this helmet. What is more relevant is that this could be a, a really interesting tool within a, a space of therapy, which is called Reminiscence therapy. The reminiscence therapy is a technique that's been used for many, many years with older adults with dementia and other cognitive impairments. And basically what it does is it encourages uh, these individuals to tell their stories to people. And what the research has found is by telling their stories, they actually have quite positive impacts on their cognition and their memory, and also on things such as their mood and their emotions. Well, we went to Gibraltar, and on one, the first night I remember, there was a, a Spanish group, and I remember the song they sang. I went, da, 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 da. We started synthetic memories because we saw that there was this uh, false dichotomy between this idea of artificial intelligence being like this dystopian technology that will kill us all. And on the other side, this very naive perspective that AI was a solution for everything. We tried to find a way to actually bring value and help people and create something that could make a positive impact, as well as creating and engaging with the technology in a very critical way. In this case, um, we were using uh, artificial intelligence from Google, we were exploring how, from text, we could generate both video and images. So as Google Arts and Culture, we've been looking at how art and creativity can help enhance health and well-being in a few different ways. And through that research, we came across synthetic memories and domestic data streamers. We have some of the pictures from your hitchhiking trip around Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to be rather too elegantly dressed there. What about this one, Edward? Yes, probably more like that. With a rucksack, yes. Ah, oh, yes. 
I see great benefit and potential for the synthetic memory tool in reminiscence therapy. We're asking them to recall memories from 50, 60, even 70 years ago. This tool can allow us to generate that imagery that can help to have more beneficial conversations and discussions. And we want to expand the ongoing research that, and collaboration that we are doing with museums and cultural institutions, transforming these museums into spaces of memory reconstruction. Okay, so this is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> These visual memories can shape our sense of belonging, our sense of self, how we connect with other people, what is our past and how we can show it in a way that is not only in our heads, but also in images. Okay, 